face of Jesus Christ. We have all the noble qualities of Jonathan in far higher excellence than his, and we have this further consideration, that for us he has laid down his life, and that none who receive his friendship can ever be separated from his love. And what an elevating and purifying effect that friendship will have. In alliance with him, you are in alliance with all that is pure and bright, all that is transforming and beautifying, all that can give peace to your conscience, joy to your heart, luster to your spirit, and beauty to your life, all that can make your garments smell of myrrh, and aloes, and cassa, all that can bless you and make you a blessing. And once you are truly his, the bond can never be severed, David had to tear himself from Jonathan, but you will never have to tear yourselves from Christ. Your union is cemented by the blood of the everlasting covenant, and by the eternal efficacy of the prayer, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. 1 Samuel 21 to 1 15, then came David to Nob. Almost gone it is not easy to walk with God. I the steps of David's declension. The first sign of what was impending was his remark to Jonathan, that there was but a step between himself and death. 1 underscore 20 to 3. Evidently his faith was beginning to falter, for nothing could have been more definite than the divine assurances that he was to be king. The winds and waves were more daunting than the promise of God was inspiring. Perchance David relied too absolutely on what he had received, and neglected the daily renewal of the heavenly unction. John underscore 1 colon 33 34, 1 JN underscore 3 colon 24. Next he adopted a subterfuge, which was not worthy of him, nor of his great and mighty friend. Late in the afternoon of the day preceding the weekly Sabbath, the king's son-in-law arrived with a mere handful of followers, at the little town of Nob, situated among the hills about five miles to the south of Jibia. Probably the great annual convocations had fallen into disuse, and the path to the simple sanctuary was only trodden by occasional visitors, such as Doeg, who came to pay their vows, or be cleansed from ceremonial pollution. There was, evidently, no attempt made to prepare for large numbers, the heart fare of the priests only just sufficed for them, and the presence of two or three additional strangers completely overbalanced the slender supply. There were not five loaves of common bread to spare. It was necessary to answer the questions, and allay the suspicions of the priest, and David did this by pleading the urgency of the mission on which his royal master had sent him. But a chill struck to his heart whilst making these excuses to the simple-minded priest, and enlisting his willing cooperation in the matter of provisions and arms, as he saw the dark visage of Doeg, the Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. He knew that the whole story would be most mercilessly retailed to the vindictive and vengeful monarch. Ten miles beyond lay the proud Philistine city of Gath, which at that time had sent its champion forth in all the pride of his stature and strength. What worse fate could await him at Gath than that which threatened him each hour he lingered within the limits of Judah? He therefore resolved to make the plunge. Not a little to his dismay, and perhaps on account of Goliath's sword hanging at his belt he was instantly recognized, and the servants of Uitish recalled the refrain, which had already awoke the jealousy of Saul. He was instantly regarded with hatred, as having slain his ten thousands. He saved himself by descending to the unworthy subterfuge of counterfeiting the behavior of a madman. 2. The Psalm of the Silent Dove At first sight we are startled with the apparently irreconcilable discrepancy between the scenes we have just described and the 56th Psalm, the inscription of which associates it with them. Closer inspection will reveal many resemblances between the singer's circumstances and his touching words. First stanza, 1-4. He turns to God from man, to the divine mercy from the serried ranks of his foes, who, surging around him, threaten to engulf and swallow him up. Thus he climbs up out of the weltering waves, his feet on the rock, a new song in his mouth, the burden of which is, I will not be afraid, Second stanza, 5-9. Again, he is in the depths. The returning wave has sucked him back. His boast changed to a moan, his challenge to complaint. 
Yet as weak and dull, we hear the voice of faith again ringing out the positive assurance, I know that God is for me. And again the old refrain comes back. Third stanza, 1013. There is no further relapse. His heart is fixed, fruiting the Lord, the vows of God are upon his head. And now, as once again he regains the sunny uplands, which he had so shamefully renounced in his flight from Jaibia to Nob, from Nob to Gath, from Gath to feigned insanity, he is sure that henceforth he will walk before God in the light of life. Truth, purity, joy, shall be the vesture of his soul. 3. The consequences to a high Lilesh. A child of God may be forgiven and restored, yet the consequences of his sin may involve sufferings to many innocent lives. So it was in this instance. Doeg took the opportunity of ingratiating himself in the royal favor, by narrating what he had seen at Nob. He carefully withheld the unsuspecting innocence and ignorance of the priest, and so told the tale as to make it appear that he and his house were accomplices with David's action, and perhaps bent on helping David to gain supreme power. By one ruthless act, the entire priestly community was exterminated. There was but one survivor, for Abiathar escaped, carrying the effort in his hands, and one day, to his horror, David beheld the disheveled, blood-bespeared form of the priest, as he sped breathless and panic-stricken up the valley of Allah, to find shelter with the outlaw band in the cave of Adolam. We shall hear of him again. Meanwhile, let children of God beware. Sin is bitter to the conscience of the sinner and in its consequences upon others. F. B. Maya B. A. 1 Samuel 22-1-2, David therefore departed thence, and escaped to the cave of Adolam. David at the cave of Adolam David had strangled a lion, slain a giant, and overcome two hundred Philistines, but he is himself overcome by his needless fear. The fear that terrified David arose as much from his own sin as from Saul's fury. Had David been truthful to the priest at Nob he would not have had to dissemble before the king of Gath and hide like a traitor in the cave of Adolam. One misstep leads to another. The troubles of life frequently spring from our own folly. By David's escape to the cave of Adolam. 1. It was a place of perfect safety. 2. It was a place of comparative seclusion. David needed rest and quiet. The tremendous excitement through which he had passed had exhausted both body and mind. 3. It was a place of earnest supplication. If David sinned at Nob, he sincerely repented at Adolam. David sought for forgiveness for his sin. David sought protection from his enemies. David sought deliverance from his prison. There is a cave of Adolam in every life. Doubt may be such a cave. Persecution may be such a cave. Sickness may be such a cave. Bereavement may be such a cave. There is no cave deep and dark enough to shut out God. 2. David's associates in the cave of Adolam. Notice three things respecting David's followers. 1. It was an affectionate association. In time of trouble God will raise up friends to comfort his believing children. 2. It was a mixed association. 3. It was a faithful association. These men proved both their courage and constancy. When David longed for water from Bethlehem they imperiled their lives to gratify his desire. David's experience agrees in some points with Christ's. David was concealed in a cave, Christ was laid in a manger. David was an outlaw, Christ was despised and rejected of men. David was sustained by men in distress, Christ selected for his disciples men who were poor and unknown. David was made a captain over 400, Christ is the captain and savior of all who are in distress. If any man is weary of Satan's service, he may become a soldier of the cross. 3. David's thoughtfulness in the cave of Adolam. David was therefore deeply concerned for their safety, and his ardent attachment manifested itself in three ways. 1. By his dangerous journey to promote the comfort of his parents. David went thence to Moab. This was not a long journey, but it was difficult to accomplish. 2. 
by his earnest intercession to obtain protection for his parents. 3. By his special endeavor to secure respect for his parents. He brought them before the king, this was a prudent introduction. And they dwelt with him, this was gracious reception. All the while that David was in the hold, this was generous hospitality. We cannot too highly commend David's devotion to his parents. He was willing to sacrifice his life and liberty for their safety. 4. David's departure from the cave of Adullam. We may learn three things from David's departure from the cave of Adullam. 1. Good men receive timely direction from God. Abide not in the hold. God will not disappoint those who wait for his guidance. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. 2. Good men receive minute direction from God. Get thee into the land of Judah. All the agencies of life, seen and unseen, known and unknown, are regulated by God. 3. Good men promptly obey the direction of God. Then David departed. Whether God call us to serve or suffer, we must cheerfully obey. We dare not resist the leadings of divine providence. There is a time coming when we must all depart. J. T. Woodhouse. 1 Samuel 22-5-23 And the prophet Gad said unto David, A friend and a foe I the visit of Gad the seer. David had been brought very low through his own mistakes. God proved him in the hold. Then he sent to him, Wherever you are, wait for a message from God before you move. 2. Saul's appeal to his servants. No one answered it but the alien Doeg. Notice, Herod was an Edomite. The race always conspicuous for hatred to Israel. What circumspection is necessary in God's children? Always a Doeg looking on. Exo underscore 23 colon 13, 1 underscore 2 colon 12, 1 underscore 2 colon 15 16, false witness, often nearly true. A lie that is half a truth is ever the worst of lies, mar underscore 14 colon 55 59, mat underscore 26 colon 61. Built on supposition, act underscore 21 colon 27 29. 3. God fulfills himself in many ways. The massacre of Nob, though unjustifiable in Saul, was God's sentence on Eli's house, once underscore 3 colon 12 14, Isu underscore 5 to 7, etc. 4. Security with David, once underscore 22 colon 23. This was beautiful faith. The outcast promising protection because the Lord was with him. He was willing to protect him with his life. So was Jesus. He was not only willing, but he did it, 1 JN underscore 3 to 8, 1 JN underscore 3 colon 16. Ah. E. Faulkner.